but again, you just remove the chair. So like we were saying right. earlier, I just removed all the furniture from my home. Yeah, we stopped, <laughs> you we took all in chairs. the chairs out of your house. You don't have one chair in your house. No, we don't. We, we just ground, <laughs> we ground live. So we ground live, and that's and been amazing because you suddenly discover there's like a hundred different rest positions that you can choose on the ground. Uh-huh. And we have one, we're sitting down now, right? Yeah. But there's like a hundred different rest positions. So what are the main complaints I get to see when I'm, when I'm coaching somebody in movement or any other discipline? And it's, um, I've got lower back pain, I've got knee pain, um, I've got neck pain. And you realize that they're all the areas that really should be more stable. They have a mobility role, but they have mm-hmm. a stability role. And then you have areas that are designed to specifically to be more mobile than they are stable. So the ankle joint mobility, the hip joint mobility, and the thoracal spine more mobility. And so they're the areas that should be mobile. But unfortunately, when we, when we sit down and we sit in couches and the posture that you get within a couch is you slouch, right? So we turn uh-huh. into a slouching, couching, typing, swiping organism. And the problem is there that then it wipes out those areas that are designed for mobility, and they get stiff, and then the areas that should be stable are now getting more and more mobility into them. Mm. So when we talk about lower backs, essentially when the hip and the mid-back have kind of lost perception, or you've lost perception of their role, and therefore the lower back gets attacked. So the way that we address right. it is just take it to the ground, man, and then suddenly it's like, wow, look at what, look at all these different positions I can be choosing. And that wipes out even things like standing desks, because stat- loads of hype around a standing desk at the moment. But it's just as detrimental to to stand all day with crappy posture as it is to sit with crappy posture, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're standing but you're not adopting proper form, then you're doing harm. You know, when we talk about form, the danger is where, where we talk about form, people start thinking, oh, I have to tense my core and squeeze my glutes and all this stuff. But it's that's not it. It's basically going back to what is a wild posture. Hunter-gatherers do not tense their core and squeeze their glutes while they're moving around, nor does any other animal on the planet. What dogs might do, they just can't communicate. Oh, I'm uh-huh. tensing my core right now and squeezing my glutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just feel it's not happening. But it's that, that, again, what hasn't changed for them is their environment. The environment is still the same. They're still moving the same through a landscape. And they, hunter-gatherers specifically, move through a landscape. But they don't usually move through it. They become the landscape. You know what I mean? They don't see themselves as separate from it. It's not the standing or the sitting. It's the fact that those are that those are things that we do for extended periods of time, right? Like even the most fit, and I plead guilty to this, like I'm, I'm fit, I, go, I work out every day, I train, but then I'm sitting at a desk. Even if I'm sitting in an ergonomic chair, I'm still sitting for hours and hours and hours. And sometimes I don't get up and move around that much. And so, yeah, I have lower back issues. I have some sciatic issues. Uh, you know, if you're scrolling and looking at your phone, your neck is tensed up. Like, I know what that feels like. Like, this is, <laughs> these are, you know, things that I think every single human being is experiencing on some level. No matter how fit you are, we're all sitting too much, right? Well, it's every, again, because it's almost like we've, we've, <clears throat> um, we've fitting two groups here, but Every single human being would mean also hunter gatherers. You see, I'm just saying. I'm talking about like I'm talking about like modern Western civilization. Yeah, exactly. So we're in that. So that's like I have this thing. There's 83 percent of the UK are living in urban environments, and there's a stat that's like they spend 90 95 percent of their time indoors. So that's like wow. Okay, you you guys are blessed here because I mean we've just been on that amazing trail Mm -hmm. and you have that outdoor experience. In in London, it's like whoa. It's, it's, sometimes people are just sheltering, you know, they've got to get away from what they see as um, the elements, let's say. But let's say they're 90% of their time indoors. So 90% of their time indoors, how do, we, how do we flip it? How do we make the indoors more nourishing again? And so that for me, it has to be, uh, if 95%, 90% of my time is indoors, how much of that is, am I spending sedentary? Uh-huh. How, do I, how do I change that? And so that, that's been the biggest cue for me. I went into Santander and did a talk in there with the asset management team. And it was the same thing. As soon as I arrived, I met the head of the team and I said, look, it's your responsibility. The first thing is the air quality in here. It's terrible. Clean up the air. It's probably worse indoors than it is outdoors. So put air purification systems in here. And then to the people that had this, their desk area, I said, this is your responsibility. You either create a growth promoting desk area or a compromising desk area. It's a choice, right? But here's how you can make the changes to start with. Because a lot of it, people don't understand that there is another way. There is another choice that they can be making. 
So then it was the, okay, your HR department here, they wouldn't even let people hug in, in, they're not allowed to hug in the office. And I was like, imagine all the happy hormones you're getting, like oxytocin, you hug for longer, you get serotonin. Well, hugging's tricky these days. Yeah, it's really tricky. I guess it's how long you hold it for and how uncomfortable it becomes, but it is, it's a tough one. And, and so that was, for me, that was like, right, so one thing, okay, let's strip that, but we can't do that. That's, that's okay. Are we allowed standing desks? And there was one person in that whole office that had a standing desk. Mm. And I said, okay, let's just go through what you can be doing if you have to sit, right? We set a timer, 20 minutes, ding, timer goes off. You just push your chair back and you hold your desk and we just squat. And you do like three squats at the desk to reset the posture. Uh-huh. And then I want you to walk from one end of the building to the other and then come back to your desk, done. And every 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes. And then said so to the guy who leads the floor, Mehdi, are you okay with that? He's like, yeah, man, this is cool. Uh-huh. And then, right, okay, the next thing I want you to all have a plant. So a piece of lily is really easy to keep, so easy. You can go away for two weeks. They might be a bit droopy when you come back, but just a little bit of water and then they're up again. And that will remove benzene, xylene, formaldehyde from this environment again. So put that right on your desk. So then two women just rushed out immediately, went out, bought two pieces of lilies, put them on their desk. Just, just simple little adjustments. And again, it gives them something living in that environment that they can then nurture and they have to look after. What about lighting? Lighting's a, you know, it's a big one for me. Um, we, as well as not having any furniture in our house, we switched to <laughs> remote control bulbs and amber lighting. I should point out, you have three daughters. Yeah, uh, wife, right. Um, Lola, Millie, so and Tallulah. Like, yeah, what are their ages? Nine, just about to turn ten, just about to turn eight. A three-year-old and uh, a new one on the way. So, so they're they're young enough that getting rid of the chairs is like a game and probably fun. But we were joking earlier, like <laughs> therapy. fast forward to them, you know, being 25, 30 years old, telling their therapist that their dad make that made them take all the chairs out of the house. Well, it's funny because <laughs> when when we moved childhood to Ibiza, trauma, when we moved to Ibiza, we were just like hippies there anyway. It was fine, yeah. and it was just and and then other people were doing the same. And now I have that people. Every time I move into a new place, I go and buy a table from somewhere and i just take the legs off cut the legs off yeah right? it's and a very japanese like, where'd you get that where'd you get that table from and i showed them a video that's what i did so there's people now instagramming me to say oh i've taken the legs <laughs> off my table so therapy might go up uh-huh. there might be a new field for this right the trauma of the ground living population but um so you just squat around the the my, dinner table or again, sit because we again we see one rest position there's there's multiple we're going to go through them later because it'll help just unravel stuff from our run but there's kneeling positions, there's positions called shin boxes, and you can just flip from one to the next, it's like a mobility session. So mm-hmm. rather than us going to yoga and doing flexibility work, we just ground live because, again, I don't see hunter-gatherers doing mobility work and yoga, but they're amazing specimens again. So it's, what are they doing? So you strip it back, oh, they ground live. Okay, so let's yeah. ground live. And what's been different is each child that's been growing, for, so Lola was familiar with city, seating furniture, sitting furniture. Millie was about two when we ditched the furniture. So for her, it's not really in there. But Lola, there is kind of, you know, whereas Tallulah was born um, without any furniture in the home. Um, We carried her everywhere. She never got, never had a car seat, never had a stroller, always in a carrier. We did no nappies with her. So she had no nappy. Um, How did you do that? We just, we have more trust in, like with dogs and cats, we have loads of trust in them, right? We get them litter trays and they poop in it and then they're done. With our babies, we keep them in nappies for four years, man. It's like the most intelligent species. We perceive ourselves as the most intelligent species, yet we don't put any trust in our babies. And it's a relationship between Katerina to start with and the baby. Katerina's my wife, by the way. And, um, and, and she built this amazing relationship that whenever the baby would make a signal, she'd know that the baby needs to go, well, Tallulah needed to go to the toilet. Mm. And then eventually that's then passed on to all of us because we can see her signals. And given the chance... That innate ability, because the baby's picking up, oh, they're listening to me. Ah, oh, they're listening to me. The signal gets stronger. Mm. And the signal gets so strong that the baby knows, ah, oh, I know to go to the toilet. And then eventually, at, I think about 10 months, she stood up, super strong, like boom, not a toddler, not rolling around, but strong. And then occasionally, well, we, again, we lived out in the sun, so we had terracotta tiles on the floors. Occasionally, she'd do a poop on the floor. But at 10 months already, she was going off, grabbing a cloth and then wiping up her mess, you know? It was just, ah, super it was young. just again, another level that I think I could see it in their movement because obviously we removed the furniture. She, she was rock climbing at 12 months. It's like, people were like, what's going on? This like, child's insane. Wow. Um, and barefoot running, they can all barefoot run. They run over anything just uh-huh. like I do. And again, it's not, again, it's just their innate ability. So I haven't. I haven't dumbed it down in a way. I haven't domest- domesticated their movement. I've always just nurtured it. And instead of saying, get down from there, I teach them how to climb. 
You know, my fear mm-hmm. doesn't get in the way. Katerina occasionally had it, you know, oh my God, they're really close to the edge. And I'd say, no, we have to go to the edge with them and we have to guide them and, and, and explain things to them. But don't hit them with, oh, what's near the edge? Because guess what? I'm going to want to know what's over the edge if someone reacts like yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? So Katerina is totally on board. Did you meet her when you were already like well on this path? Or, or you know, like what's her relationship with all the stuff that you do? Um, I met Katerina. She blew my mind because I had a Pilates practice years ago um, in a health club. I had a big space and Pilates practitioners. And and then I had a separate reception. It was in the health club. And then there was the main reception of the health club. So every now and then I'd come out to my reception, check what was going on with a diary and who was in. And and then I looked across and there was this beautiful woman standing behind the desk. I was like, ah, oh, my friend, who's that? I've got, to, I've got to go and ask her who she is, you know. And um, he said, oh, I think she's new. Okay, so I went over and I just said, look, hey, um, can you go and get a piece of paper and a pen? And she was like, yeah, okay, off I go. And off she went and got a piece of paper and a pen. And I just came back and said, can you just write your number down? I'll take you out. <laughs> and that was it. And we went out to dinner and I took her to, um, this is a while back now, um, and I didn't know at the time, I took her to Gaucho Grill. So I took her to Gaucho Grill and we sat on cowhide chairs and ordered a ridiculous steak as I was doing at that particular time. Um, when was that? T- 11 years ago. And she looked really uncomfortable. And then I said, you're okay? She said, yeah, I'm a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, ah, False move number yeah, one. Yeah, okay, can you imagine? I've done, what have I done? Um, so then we got around it. I ordered some amazing caramelized onion. Um, uh, mushrooms and a dish and that was fine and we and and we hit it off and it was amazing and then over time I'd always said that Katerina was far more connected than I was and I was almost trying to get to a position where she was so um she was heavily influenced by yoga um but there were things going on with her in within her own digest digestion through what I'd say was a poor vegan diet at that time loads of grains and pulses and that was it and um guided by, I think, her student life. She was studying um, psychology at the time. She's from Slovakia, so she was converting her master's in psychology into a UK degree and was working behind reception while studying and being a nanny. So she was like, I was wow, just in awe, that. you know. This is incredible. And, um, yeah, as I say, I've always felt like I, I, was, I was having to... I was trying to get to her level. Cut, 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 cut. 